Hello and welcome back to Morsels and Motors. Uh, I'm here today in Hayes in London, uh, in the Zantia, to visit Palmdale Motors um, because I'm here to meet Ashley who uh, owns the company to uh, borrow a very special car. And why is this car so special? It is because it has done 508,000 miles. That's probably about it, to be honest, because it's actually just a Citroen Picasso. Um, but the fact that it's a Citroen Picasso that can do 508,000 miles is impressive in itself. And we have got it for a couple of months from Ashley, uh, who runs Palmdale Motors here. Uh, and we're going to touch about on it. My friend Jim's going to play around with it. Uh, and we're going to see if we can put some miles on the clock. So uh, as a vehicle sourcing company, we're asked to source a small Citroen for someone. And he had a car to part exchange. And I was actually more excited about the car to part exchange because it was this. He had done 472,000 miles on the car over a long period of time. He does many miles a year. And when we got it in, I said, uh, let's get up to half a million miles, which we did. And now it's uh, just come up to 508,000 miles, but it is the original engine. It is the original gearbox, it's even the original radiator. And as you guys will find out in a short while, it drives spot on, just lovely. Okay, so we have made it home with the Picasso and the Xantia, which is behind the camera. Let's have a look around the Picasso. I didn't drive it home, so I, this is kind of my first time to have a proper look around it. Um, I mean, first impressions are, it's a bit of a shed, to be honest, but it has done 500,000 miles, so I suppose you can't really knock it for that. Um, the other point that I wanted to make at the very beginning of this video is when I was driving behind it the whole way uh, up from, from uh, Heathrow back up to Cambridge. I don't remember when the last time I saw one of these was. It, I think it might have been years. It's, which is really strange because they were just everywhere and suddenly they have completely vanished. Uh, and to have one that has done so many miles is a real testament to the fact that, you know, they are actually not as horrendous as you might have thought they were. So anyway, with that in mind, let's have a look around the car to see what half a million miles does to a very mundane, very average French hatchback. So let's start around the outside, uh, the front, probably the best place to start. Uh, we've got a nice bit of lacquer peel happening. Uh, it's very dirty. Uh, we've got a very faded bumper that might have been replaced at some point, who knows, or there's a lot of paint that's kind of flaked off there at least. Uh, super faded, the grey is kind of faded to white there. Fog lights, wonder if they work. A little bit of a scratch there. Wheel trims, obviously. This is uh, from early noughties. Picasso. Uh, over the passenger side we have a very broken door mirror which is being held on with tape. That might be something I might have a look at uh, tomorrow and see if I can get that stuck on in a slightly better way to make it look a little bit less like a shed. Down underneath on the sill underneath the driver's door there's some very um, entertaining welding has been done but you know it's got an MOT so it can't be that bad. We've got a bit of a gouge taken out of the rear sill on that side as well and a little bit of rust on the bottom of the door but that's not too painful. Past the Picasso. Around the back it's fairly all right. It's not too bad, not too scratched, not too damaged. Um, I noticed when I was driving behind it on the way that the um, top brake light isn't working so that might be something to um, have a look at. Uh, driver's side again we have a kind of tide marky sill with dents in it and some again fairly entertaining looking uh, welding with some uh, I mean it's been it, there's an attempt to put some uh, kind of seam sealer over that but you know fair enough I, I don't think that repair was made with love another wheel trim this door mirror seems intact and we're back to the front again time to have a look inside Okay, this is the first time I have actually even been inside this car or opened the door. Oh, that's the sound of quality, that door opening there. have some slightly saggy driver's seat that looks a bit skanky. There's apparently an airbag in there. I'm not entirely certain I would trust that. Uh, 
I like the armrests. I mean, considering it's done half a million miles, that's not that worn, to be honest. Passenger seat looks, on camera it doesn't look that bad, but in reality it is actually really skanky. Uh, and it's actually worse than the driver's seat. Uh, torn gaiter on the uh, gear stick, missing button on the radio. The air conditioning does not work, it has been reported. Uh, and that's the central uh, display, and I'll get the key in a moment, and we can have a double check of that mileage. It's actually quite cool, the dashboard has quite a bit of storage area right in front of the driver, so I've got some sunglasses in there, and there's an identical one in front of the passenger over there. Uh, steering wheel looks worn. It doesn't look filthy, but I suspect it probably is absolutely manky. So uh, I might get a bit of uh, cleaning equipment on that. It does have steering wheel controls. Ooh, these are the same as the ones in the Xantia. Exactly the same buttons. How fun is that? Uh, oh, and also, oh, it's got the same indicator stalks or wiper. What's this one? The, yes, indicator stalk and lights as the Xantia. Exactly the same with the horn on the end. Ha, huh, did not know that was reused for another Citroen. And I'm guessing that's also, yeah, it looks like the same uh, wiper one on that side. What else have we got in here? Storage, let's look at storage. Glove box, it exists, it works, it opens, and it doesn't, hasn't broken. That's good. There's an ashtray. Oh, that's like a cubby thing in there with, don't know what that is. Some sort of head up display, GPS thing, some stickers. That looks like a blank of something that could be there, and there's a 12 volt socket thing on that side. Okay, got a little shelf here in which there is located a key. In which case, let's turn it on and have a little look at this display. 507984. Half a million miles. That is so cool. Digital speedometer. I haven't driven this yet, so I'm going to be excited to see how I cope with the digital speedometer. I don't generally like them very much. Okay, let's turn that off and have a look in the back. Oh, it beeps a lot. Ah, all right, all right, all right, all right. I won't leave the key in the lock. Oh, door cards are, uh, and door handles are particularly skanky, so I uh, might clean those a little up as well. Okay. The rear door opens really widely. Looks like there is a great amount of uh, space in here. So I can see why they were popular with families. Let's get in. Oh yeah. Oh, the seat's quite firm here in the back, but you do have a really nice elevated position and you can kind of see all around. That's actually really good. And the, um, the, the front quarter windows, they're fab. They give you a brilliant view from here in the back. That's really good. Uh, so you have three separate independent seats with a central three-point seat belt as well for the um, central seat. That's good. Uh, do the tray tables work? Uh, oh, there you go. Come on, work. Yes, they work. Oh, and there's a, oh, look at that. There's a picture of a Picasso. <laughs> That's so cute. Passenger one work? Come on. <gasps> we have a full complement of trays that, considering this is done... 500,000 miles. That's in pretty good shape. The passenger seat has three seatbelt buckles. Okay, that's interesting. I'll investigate that later. The front seats are also really far apart, so you have really masses of masses of space in the back here. I really like the back. Okay, let's get the boot, have a look in the boot. That's not happy. Oh, there we go. You have to sort of push down on the handle as well as uh, pull up on the little nubbin inside. That's quite a capacious boot. Plenty of space in there. And we even have, oh my God, that's so cool. A little Citroen kind of bottle bag, shopping bag. That's super, full of bits and stuff. Probably bits and stuff that have fallen off the car. Also, I think it might have a handle that goes up, so I'm super excited to actually get it out of the car. But first of all, let's have a look, see what's in it. That looks like something that used to be in an engine bay. I have no idea what it is. Ooh, these are its original number plates. Dutton Forshaw, Forshaw, I can't say it. Dutton Forshaw Citroen. 
there you go from that oh yeah pr2 so it's preston and it is a preston number plate so these would have been its original plates don't know why they were taken off the car so that's fun to have uh what else have we got a neck pillow some oil that's always inspiring when there's oil in the back of a car isn't it a belt used belt Ooh, a shredded belt why have they kept a shredded belt okay uh a greg's coffee cup this is like a generation game a scraper some general rubbish anything else come on give me one more fun thing oh boot thing cellulose thinners <laughs> nice there's some tea cut scratch remover i feel i feel that was optimistic with this car uh, it's full so i'm not surprised uh a galaxy uh that's it okay so i mean there's no there's no massive treasure oh hang on what's this that's a potato ricer okay then oh my god it's got wheels this is like a proper trolley we can go shopping can we take this around a supermarket and go shopping with our citroen picasso shopping trolley that's amazing i adore that so much and now i want a picasso just so i can have one of these even more excitingly look that's like a clippy thing an attachment that this clips into that's even more exciting it's broken but i think that the wheels kind of click into that and they kind of there you go that's its space oh and there's even look oh my goodness there's a velcro there's a velcro thing there's a velcro thing that goes around the handle to keep it in place that's just adorable that's my favorite thing about this entire car apart from the fact that it's done 500,000 miles oh quality that is the sound of quality uh, let's have a look in the passenger side it looks kind of carry and in the door we have a random piece of plastic it says megaplast on the back of it so i don't know if it has anything to do with this car let's do one more thing i forgot let's look at the engine bay oh it is this side oh yeah that worked okay uh, this is always a test of a car where is the thing i found the thing okay well under this kind of heavy bonnet that doesn't have struts and i can't find the little stick now but it'll be around somewhere oh there it is find the stick game uh we have an engine it's um i would say i don't know a lot about this engine my guess is it's pretty reliable that that would be that would be my kind of go home from this car that is that is a reliable engine oh yeah i found something else that's broken i don't there's not much broken on this car considering the mileage um but the little clip to hold the uh bonnet stay that's that's broken that's a shame i think we can probably live without it though start up this beast this is the first time i've driven this car by the way glow plugs do we have glow plugs maybe this isn't a glow pluggy car I mean that that started didn't sound the healthiest of starts oh quality right pedals yes they, they're there they exist Ooh. oh this car feels tall everything's far away oh there's quite a lot of play in that gear stick <laughs> this is going to be fun oh i'm slightly scared Okay, so uh, the uh, uh, accelerator is um, very stiff. Oh, uh, it's not terribly responsive to uh, your old right foot. Uh, the gearbox exists. It, it has one. It kind of, it works. It's okay. I feel very high up and that there's a huge amount of space in front of me. I feel like there's like a spaceship there, like I'm in a shuttlecraft on uh, the Star Trek Next Generation uh, and I should actually not have a steering wheel but a, but a little console to, to, to tap away at. I am merging onto a dual carriageway. The car's now beeping at me to say it needs water. I'm really very much hoping that is uh, 
uh, water of the screen wash variety rather than coolant, but I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, so initial impressions after a few minutes of driving this car is, it has kind of worse visibility than I was expecting, but it might just be that the mirrors aren't quite, are quite small and not adjusted exactly how I'd like them, so I should play around with those in a bit. Uh, the clutch is very heavy, uh, so in city traffic my left leg is already hurting and I've literally only just driven out of my house. Uh, the accelerator pedal is also really heavy, so you kind of, it's like sort of, it's like mashing potato with your right foot. Maybe that's why there's a potato ricer in the boot, I don't know. Uh, but it's fine, it gets you there, but you really do have to like properly squeeze it. Let's see how much poke it has. I mean, we're in fourth, so we're not doing that much. Actually, it's quite refined, we're doing 17, it doesn't feel like it. It's quite quiet, the engine, you're not really aware of it. Uh, and in terms of the ride comfort as well, it's kind of gliding along. You're really high up. I mean, I used to drive an SUV, so I should be used to driving a high, high up car, but I think the fact the window line is so low makes you feel like you're higher up than you would be in an SUV where the window line is higher. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm sitting on top of the car, looking down at creation. I can't remember who Ronnie Pickering is. You don't know who Ronnie Pickering I, is? Does anyone? Does anybody know who Ronnie Pickering is? <laughs> Anyway, where was I? Um, Citroen Picassos and their current role in society. Well, this car is 20 years old, which is surprising because it doesn't feel like it should be 20 years old. And they used to be absolutely everywhere, this type of car, um, small MPVs, this and the Scenic, uh, the Galaxy, the B Max, or whatever the other Ford versions are. Um, they were everywhere for a while in the noughties. Oh my God, this accelerator is so heavy. I feel this car might have poke, but it takes so long to actually press the accelerator down that you forget that it goes further. Will you ever turn up to the Festival in Exceptional or a classic car show in 10 years time in a Picasso? Mainly because do they even exist? Will there even be one on the road? That's the question. I mean, I suppose there probably are some low mileage examples that are loved by some Francophiles, but literally when did you last see one? Because I remember them. Like 10 years ago, they were the ubiquitous McDonald's drive through car, uh, which probably never had an oil change and were just absolutely like 250 pound cars that were shagged to death in a year and, you know, an MOT would kill it. Uh, so they were absolutely the bottom lowest of the low. And they weren't even, like, I think they were, I think they were probably chod when they were new, right? You didn't buy a Picasso because you were, kind of aspirational to some aspiring some delightful product you're buying a Picasso because they were like 10 grand and you had four children well technically three because you could only fit three people in the back of a Picasso uh, but anyway yes I don't think they're the sort of car that it's probably the Fiesta popular in a way it's a sort of car that was bought by people who couldn't buy anything better and therefore they were thrown away as if they were completely valueless like washing machines or a, an, an old tumble dryer, you know, just cast aside at the smallest thing. And this car wasn't. Why was this car not? Why has somebody driven this car for 470,000 miles before deciding, you know what, I think I'm done now? <laughs> Why? But I'm glad they did. I mean, isn't it lovely that they did? Uh, that, that someone has kept this bastion of shite going and going and going uh, and to prove that it can. I think it's brilliant. I'm just having a little look through the service uh, manual for the car uh, and it had an interesting looking life. I mean it would have done if it had 508,000 miles on it but for the first few years it's done normal mileage so 11,000, 26, 36, 50, 65, something like that. Then we get 2007. So if you look at this, oh, it's been stamped in France by that point. So I guess the owner must have lived or had a property in France and traveled from UK to France. So in April, 2007, it had done 89,000 miles. October, 2007, 157,000 miles. How on earth can you do that? That's like 70,000 miles in six months. That's bananas. Anyway, it goes on, 178, etc, 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 309,000, 
yeah, just keeps going. Anyway, they stopped bothering filling in the thing after 309,000 miles. <laughs> so that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I am going to go and give it a bit of a jet wash, gonna go and do an oil change and fix some of the little bits and pieces that are broken on it, like the mirror, the uh, brake light, and see what else we can tidy up in it and give it a bit of a clean inside as well. I've got a wet vac to see if we can do that. So stay tuned for part two of the uh, Pass the Picasso adventure. Oh, and we've only got a day to do it in. Drama, peril. See you next time.